talking tree. I am 575 years old. We are here period 1375. I am the great grandfather spirit tree. I come to say we must save the trees and the ancient tree forests as did the Wamp- Wampanoag, the Manitou Asabani people first called Patuxet Indian Nation, then being Manitou, Asabani, meaning place of sacred rocks and ancient trees like me. They are the native people who saved the pilgrims later in 1640. People of Plymouth County, Wampanoag, then the great Wampanoag Confederacy under Massasoit, the Sachem. The trees must be saved like the Patuxet people did to survive and to live from everything made from wood. Then we would have a great five moon ceremony to thank the spirits like me called Nikomo. So I say no more words. We go to the river. Now go up river to see the swan and follow the river to the ponds and lakes region of White Island being period 1671 to meet the region. Ojio, Ojine, follow the way with the sacred drum song.
1671. We are here at White Island, home of the Federation of Agawam Indians. I mean, here as your host. I am from the Namaskit people, place you call Bridgewater. We still visit the plan for the new five moon ceremony called Nikomo. I will talk with powwow, spirit special men. One, a Iroquois. Another, a Patuxet shaman. And bring words to talk with Sachem Quarterhasset of the Manamit tribe. We'll be at the camp of the Federation of Agawam Indians who own the land of all Great White Island. Hey, 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 what a special visit to be with such powerful people, the Iroquois and the Patuxet. Look at all the staffs, drums, the three bean sisters for our beginning Nikomo ceremony, the thanksgiving to the creator and spirit people. Oh, look at that staff of the two bear staff. That's beautiful. Brothers, can you give us the people words? Anna, Ojine, Naho, I, Hiawata, from the north country of the Iroquois lands to share our thanksgiving ceremony to give thanks to our mother the earth called to the island you call it North America we give thanks to great grandfather he know thanks the sacred white pine tree of peace and life I bring the sacred snake staff that leads the way to life. I say no more, but wait to the drum song, the dance, the Thanksgiving dance, the Wampanoag, call it Nikomo dance. We call it the Gahana Oha. Thanksgiving dance. Anna. Wami. Wonka. The Patuxet Powwow. Shaman. We prepare for the five moon Nikomo ceremony. We start with the Shaveri Festival. I like strawberries festival. The Green Corn Festival. In November, you call Thanksgiving. Wonka, we give thanks. We have our Nikomo. We eat niche corn. And we eat and pray for the water and the animals the mother gives to us. We play sacred drum for the Nikomo dance. So I am the red cedar tree spirit. See my red cedar diamond. I speak these words and say, Wonka, Wonka nay. I the region back again, your host. We followed the Swan and Turkey Trail to the Federation Agawam Indians Camp. Wonkanish. 
Oh, look! In the pine trees! It looks like Sachem caught a hasset. See if he will talk. What the two sits? Mokane, Wami, Sachem caught a hasset of the 100,000 acre reservation of Mono Scusset. I am the Manamit tribe chief, Sachem. The reservation starts. At Scotts Beach Ocean, to Sagamore Hill, to Massapee, back to Plymouth County, Carl Manitou Asavani. I visit my niece, Mr. Hananuk, meaning, in your words, beautiful morning star. Wonka wa me, Mishinook. It means morning star. This is my village. I am excited. We prepare nasong, mean corn cakes, fruit, deer meat, and other things for Anikomo ceremony, giving thanks to the Creator. Look at that wolf! Hey, say some quarter hatchet here. I made this great spirit wolf and coyote mixed fur to honor the Agamon people for the ceremony, the Nikomo dance, and the great circle fire where we all talk the Massachusetts people down to of Wampanoag country come to meet. Look, Sachem Korda has it here, I see. Katara Tonk, the Tonk, the keeper of the Nikomo fire. He prepares the wood and the great circle fire. Oh, look, again. Look at the beautiful Kwa over there. Koko Kiaham. Wonka wa me, Koko Kiong. Wonka All wise woman for me. I prepare Nishkorn called Nakahong. Botch bread meal and the sump for what you call Johnny Cakes. We eat with strawberries and plums. My wooden tool is a mortar. The staff to crush the nish and beans to make our cornmeal. You use this mortar to crush everything, like nuts to babbit roots for bear stew. A bear is called mock. We crush chestnuts to make with water fruit for a chestnut milk for our babies. It's like milk from the pilgrim's cow, a white color, but it does not give us a pain in our belly, like the pilgrims get from their milk. The mortar is made from a hollow tree. Sometimes we use stone mortars and pestles. So now we can prepare for Anikomo. So now you've seen a woodland people village from period 1671 about saving the trees. What can you do, you say? Children, people of Mother Earth, period 2012. I say, take the red road of our people of the past and do the traditional way to fight to save the trees because 
They are trees. And I, the spirit region from 1671, will send you a Plymouth County Wampanoag and the Federation of Plymouth Indian Tribes to show you children of 2012 the way of the Red Road to save the ancient trees. I say goodbye in these words. Anna, aho, Wonka. Okay, one, two, three, and it's rolling out. Hello, everyone. I'm Chief Rodney Randy Joseph of the Federation Plymouth Tribe. Plymouth and Plymouth County actually has a tribe of Native Americans. And our ancestry goes back, way back to 1575, 1609, and to the point that the pilgrims came in 1621. Uh, there was a great confederacy of Wampanoag people. So it's not just Plymouth Indians, but in the whole community from Rhode Island all the way, uh, parts of uh, Western Massachusetts, Wampanoags have settled that whole region of area. Today, as, as uh, ancestors to those people, we're here to educate the culture and what we do and how we use wood. The name of the show is The Woodland People and the Drum Song. And why I say the woodland people, what we did is use wood for everything. I mean, this is a stump. Basically, you have the big, beautiful trees. And each piece I have here, documents, excuse my back, okay, because I have to turn from each area to explain it. We used wood. Now, I want to show and educate people by stories. Our first item, and if I may push this out further, is what's called a totem. This was carved by Renee Scott Joseph. It comes from Gaspé Bay, way up in Canada, Quebec. It's an older, antique piece of wood, and he carved it. And what the story is, this is how we, in the old days, held on to our tradition and our history. We didn't have books to teach us, but we carved everything in wood, so we, we follow each generation of people. This is a story of two bears. As I said, the carver is Renee Scott Joseph. Uh, that would be Alec Joseph's father. I think you might know Alec Joseph. Now you do, <laughs> if you don't know him. So in this uh, particular piece of work, um, what we have is this all solid hard wood, and he carved it. But it's a story of two bears, and it's a story of the little bear and the big bear. And what it explains on here is to tell our children how to grow into life and, and face all the hard parts of life, cold, sickness, all kind of homework, all those hard things that uh, kind of gets on our earth sometimes, and we have to rely on our elders and to respect our elders and learn from our elders. That is one of the key aspects of, of Native people because we teach by hand and by mouth. Now, here's the story. This is Little Bear. He's climbing the great totem and staff of life. And what happens, many times he falls down. Now, in the middle of life, and this is when your father and parents are about 40 years old, 45, 50 years old, you have the big bear. Now, it's very important that the big bear is going to the end of life to the great staff and the great deer. He's it's, it's actually a big buck in the skies of the spirit world. But to go back to the beginning of the story. Now, the staff is made with carvings of diamonds and little circles. And little bear is going up to each diamond of life. Each diamond of life explains how hot it is. So the little bear's climbing, help me, help me. I need help, father. I need help, grandmother, grandfather, mother, help me, help me. But he falls down again. And that's what happens as the little people grow up. Things become very hot. And you can't get pressed and back and stomp your feet. What you have to do is say, help me. And your father and your mother and your grandmother and your grandfather are there to help you. And that's what their job is, OK, to give you love, to give you nutrients, to help make a family grow. And in that aspect, you keep growing further and further, and then you become a teenager. Well, the next thing, what do you want as a teenager when you grow up? What's the first thing you would like to have? Any, anybody can tell me what you'd like to have as a teenager? Say it out loud. Just say it right everything out loud. Go ahead. You're over here. What would you like? That's the first thing on my mind. What's the other thing you like? As a teenager, as a present from your parents? <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, anything else? 
Well, the, go ahead. License is necessary, okay? And see, that's the aspect of the totem because the parent is first to teach you how to drive. When then it gets, it gets pretty serious, he sends you to a driving school. But the situation is, is that you want a car as a teenager. Now, if the parents have to prepare for you people to grow up because things are very expensive. And that's what, another thing you have to learn in life. These diamonds tell you also that the parents are not a free bank. That sometimes you have to work and help them, and they work and help you, and that's all part of the family growing up. Now, Big Bear, as he goes further and meets the turtle, the turtle is telling him, oh, it's time, I think, for you to have your hair very white, and you're very older, and it's time for you to meet the Great Spirit. Well, if Big Bear meets the Great Spirit, what's going to happen to Little Bear? And his rest of his brothers and sisters. Well, Big Bear goes to the top of the totem and meets the Great Buck. I am the Great Black, and you have passed to, to the spirit world. There you will enjoy complete freedom of life and no change that you have from the worldly life of pain. Well, what's happened to him? Well, he's grown all up, or she's grown all up, and now she is Big Bear. And that's what's going to all happen, and this is how we explain to our little ones. When you grow up, you become the Big Bear, and in the Big Bear of the family, you've learned everything from the parents and the elders, the grandfather and grandmother. So that's the story of two bears. Right. But we made a nice thing. One of the things to navigate the waters. How did we go back and forth on the waters and the brooks, the streams and the ocean? Fish and hunt great whales. This is carbon by uh Again, by Rainier Scott Joseph, he's a, what's called a sagamore, he's my son, and he's a great woodcock. Of course, he went from there. <laughs> this is what's called a machoon. Machoon is actually a boat made from wood. We didn't use canoes. That's the Midwest, and that's past the parties, and those type of people. Thank you. And here you see in the diagram, all right, is we actually burned down the tree from the roots and made it fall, and we carve out the center, and also bake the center with fire inside to get that hollow look. This is a small diagram of one, and in that it was it became a bark, not a bark, but a whole total tree carved machine. If you go to Plymouth Plantation these days, they have. Uh, some Native Americans still carving them out and showing it as a direction uh, to people how these things are actually made. But that really went from Cape Cod, these machines, and long machines size of the length of the school, went all the way up, hunting whales all the way up to Nova Scotia. So we were pretty fearful using a wooden boat and wooden machine. And it was told at one time we did have sails made out of deer skin. So this is a fascinating little story of how we use trees again. Remember. Trees is the center of our whole world, and it's your center of your whole world. If I may take that, please. I'm going to put it back. Thank you. You want to put it back over there? All right. The next item. Talking about trees. How do we live in the great stories of we twos? Can everyone say, we too? We too. So, what did you just say? You don't have any, any, you have any idea? Why is that very good? Where'd you learn that? What'd you say? Who else raised their hand? Do you have the same thing in mind? Where'd you learn that a week two is a house? Stand up and you can explain to and teach your own kids. No, not everybody else. Just the ones that uh, uh, are going to explain what a week two is. Please. Um, yeah.
Very good. The school you go to as well. Very good. Who else has an explanation of we too? So stand right up if you want to say anything about a we too. All right, he said most of everything you would say. All right, what a we too is. Now, this is a fascinating story. We twos are made, as he says, their frame, their exterior and interior frame. You have to have a frame just like you build in a house. It's round, ours is round. The other aspect of Indians across the Midwest, they're what they call teepees, and they go up like a cone, straight down like that. Ours is round because what it does is it protects the wind and, and makes it stay strong into the ground without nailing it to the ground. Some are made with bark and some are made of rust. So you see the pictures here, and it's the story of We Two's of 1609. Now, how did we live in a bark house? The pilgrims, when they first came for the first year, they lived in the bark house of Patuxent, which is on top of the hill where uh, the ch uh, churches and Plymouth Center areas used to be a place called Patuxent, and we were Patuxent Indians here. And everyone say Patuxent? Patuxent! And you ever hear Squanto? Well, Squanto was, uh, uh, his father was the great chief of the Patuxent tribe. They were a nation of 10,000 or more people uh, all through uh, Plymouth County region area. So, we use wheat tools. Now, there's an important story about wheat tools that we, as modern day Native Americans, how did we, we don't live in a wheat tool. I would, but my, I don't think my wife would let me do it. Now, she's Iroquois, and they built these great long houses, tall as a building here, and had 164 people live in them uh, and made uh, great, what they call castles, almost like cities, a long house of box. But we have a modern story. My aspect as chief of the Federation Plymouth Tribes, I would, I like for the last 13, 20 years, I've been teaching everyone about how we live and what our traditions are. And so I would do demonstrations. Now it's a very famous demonstration of a modern day we too and how it lasts and stays. What you see here is a couple of newspaper stories from the old colony. And it's about the great storm in 2005. Did anybody remember 2005? If you don't, you remember there was a great winter storm. It blew. It blew. How strong, and what's the sound of a wind blowing so strong? Does it go, right? Well, everybody goes, like a great storm. I want to hear that wind blowing from you here. Harder than that. I want to hear it. All right. That wind blew. And that wind blew stronger. Chief Joseph and the members of the Federation tribe said, ha ha, we're going to put a wheat to in downtown Plymouth. We had a lot of people angry with us. You're gonna, that thing's going to break, and it's going to fall all over the place. And you know, Mr. Jones, you're getting kind of nutty these days. OK, so I said, well, here we go. What I did is, this is beautiful pictures here. And you see it down on my stand, uh, on the park next to Plymouth Rock. And it's a diagram of the one we had here. It's round and had deer skin on the outside of it and also had a cornfield. Now that cornfield in the middle of a snowstorm was grown green. How does corn stalks grow green? Well, that's another trick. It's called Nicomo, the Green Corn Festival. But the case is, what happened to the sweet tooth and what happened to other buildings versus this great storm? Well, during the storm, and it was blowing like what? Woo! Blowing mighty and strong and blowing everything down, and I'm not kidding. It says, down trees, cut power lines, snap trees right in that same pot where this wheat tool was. And that wheat tool was one determination. It was saying, I'm the wheat tool good, and I'm not going to fall apart. I love that elf he's been on. I don't know. Can you stand up here with us? Are you shy? That's called a regalia. What is your name? Say it out loud. Very nice. You can stand right here, darling. All right? All right? And now you can hold the stick here for a minute because you're going to beat that drum. That's not a drum. But the point is, what happened to that wee two and the wee two that could? It's a small wee two and it was facing the what? The wind was boom. Woo, woo. And the wind too was standing strong like this. Just like Mr. Joseph. I don't care. I'm not crazy. So what happened? The trees were falling down. And then, uh, this is a story that a lot of people 
get a little disturbed when I say it, but it did happen, and I only use real facts. What happened during the blizzard, they had a great $1 million arena. It was virtually like a tent, but it was all made with metal frames and great uh, complex design of uh, different materials for the outside, and that whole big, twice the size of the school blew down from the force of the wind. So me and my crew ran up there, and we're just, the snow was so high, it's over my head. So we're digging and digging and wondering what the heck happened to the wheat tooth. Where's the wheat tooth? We dug one area, it was the wrong area. We went to another area, we dug again. Where's the wheat tooth? Don't tell me it blew down, and the sticks are all over the place. We have to pick up little sticks all over. Right? No, sir. What did the wheat tooth say against the wind? The wind, please. The wheat tooth said, I am the wheat tooth. It could keep going with the wind. I am the wheat tooth. It could. I am the wheat tooth. It could. And that wheat tooth stays strong and round against the great wind. And as many people here came by that day, that week, and you know, one gentleman said, one older gentleman said, I'm not going to die today. This is a great day, great day not to die because that we do stay there. And I'm going to be proud and strong. And we taught people the life, a simple life that, as he said, block and stick stay strong and never blew down. And that's how we lived all went along. We had a, almost like a scientific idea how to build these weak tubes. And they were round so the wind would go all the way around it. It wouldn't blow right through it. And the smoke came went straight up all the time, and we didn't die from all the smoke blowing all over the place. So we had a great idea how to build it. Now that's the story of the wheat tube. The next story goes into what we have a celebration. I'll be right with you, dears. A celebration called Nikomo. Now, does anybody know what a Nikomo festival is? No, I don't hear anybody. Alex, do you know what a Nikomo festival is? <laughs> well, it's close. All right. Now, what a Nikomo is, is a green corn festival and a prayer festival in midwinter. It's a three moon festival. And we celebrate it for three moons. In other words, three dire months in winter we will be dancing, singing, and moving all around. This is where it's going to come up to what you people will be doing next. But I will introduce the teachers in the school where we are first. But the next point is the Nikomo. N-I-C-K-A-M-M-O. Excuse my back again. It's right here. And it says here, it's not only a festival. These are from old English books. But it's also a dance. And my wife is looking at this because she had an argument about how to spell in this. And I just threw it the wrong side like that. And I thought I was looking. So, <laughs> what Anikomo is. Now, I mentioned that the Patuxent tribe was here. Okay, this is a picture of a block print made in 1609. And it, it shows what the actually Patuxent looked like. They were very tall and very strong women. But they also show that they were doing the stomp dance, which we actually called the Anikomo dance and what kind of drum they have. That drum is another whole thing that we need to practice about and talk about. But I want to talk about the Nikomo because this is not, uh, Plymouth, and th this video, and also what we're doing here, the education process, is going to be shown on YouTube, we hope, on the long run, on the internet, and that 66, 64 million people will be able to be educated from all this. So you children are going to become very famous, and. Cold Spring School, but we're going to find out who the teachers are at Cold Spring School and have uh, everybody introduce themselves, what grade, what classes they are. So we'll go into that next segment, and then after that, we're going to go, we might finish up, we're supposed to finish it at 9.30, we might finish up a little bit earlier, but we'll have a question period as well at the end. So the next thing we'll go into is, Alex, can you tell us where we are now? Ladies, and, come on, stand up please, sir. Well, you come right in the center and you say it loud. Are you proud of your school? Not to me, to them. Cold Spring School. And to the kids of the world, say, welcome to Cold Spring School. Welcome to Cold Spring School. 
Thank you very much, <laughs> Joseph. Now, we have two third grade classes. So, ladies first. I have introduced, could you come to the center, please, so we can get you on camera? <laughs> you your cute, cute smile there. And what is your name, please? And actually, what part of the third grade classes are we here? There you go. All right, very good. And how many in the class? Uh, we have 22 children. Very nice, very beautiful. Thank and you. what is the uh, courses and type of courses you have these days? Oh, general education. We do uh, math, reading, science, and social studies. We spend a long time this fall learning about Very nice. Very nice. Now you're learning that Plymouth has Plymouth Month. Exactly. That's a new exactly. one. That is actually new. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And what school are we at here? Old School. And what town is this? Plymouth. I'm not in Kingston. No. I'm not in Plumpton. No. Where am I in? Wait. All right, maybe we better introduce the next teacher before I forget about everything. Sir, this handsome gentleman, introduce yourself, please. And I'm Mr. Wall, third grade teacher. Raise your hand if you're in my class. Very nice. And we do the same exact thing for the <laughs> So, but what, what um, aspect is, is broken up with two third grade teachers? That's kind of unique. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose for that? Because you don't want too many kids in one. Um, yeah, we have a small school. Yeah. And it's just big enough that we can have about 20 kids in each class, which is a perfect number. Yeah, and that, that's uh, small town America. And in, in the way of uh, how our forefathers, native or pilgrims or whatever, from the whole world were taught in these small schools. Yeah. And the flavor of Cold Spring. We get a shot outside of Cold Spring as well. Because that's very unique in what we want to show the people of the whole world, that we're still in the tradition, traditional ways. Absolutely. And that we should uphold these older schools compared to the brand new big schools. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, that's very nice. That's very nice. Now.
is about this stump. Now, would you beat that stump and go like this? Boom, 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 boom. Keep hitting it. Hit it loud. Does that sound like a trumpet? No, no, no. That sounds like a dead piece of wood. Yeah. All right. Now, everybody knows that that is not making a drum beat, and no one can go to any place and perform and make a drum out of that, right? All right, could you stand up again, please? All right, now I'm gonna give you an opportunity to know what our next thing is. Now, <clears throat> you can come up right here, okay? And they can zoom in on this camera again. Now, if you look at this picture here, I'm gonna pick this picture up. So I can, so everybody can see, you follow me, and stay on this one side, right over here. Okay? Now, in this picture, I don't know if you're getting glare. I hope you're not getting glare. But this is a picture of Squat in 1609. This is the original Patuxent Indians. Who are they? Then? What's their name? Patuxent Indians. They were the first and Indians here and the only Indians here. Okay? And then after that, we had different tribes. The Man of the Tribe, the Middle of the Tribe. But the point is, this is showing them doing that dance you were just doing. You have to speak, pick up your feet a little bit high. It's called the Stamp Stomp Dance or the Nicomo Dance. And they had a drum. But our drums were made from trees. Uh oh. Man, we must have had some lousy beats, huh? Lousy sound. Because that's the tree that made a drum. Can you believe that? Can you believe that a tree can make a drum? It's not going to make a beat that makes a sound. Never mind with a professional singer like me. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Do we have a surprise for everybody? Shut up, Alex. Don't say nothing. <laughs> All right. You can sit down again because you're going to dance again. So you can sit down over there, all right? I have this big bag. I see you, Alice.
Because you guess it, what? Hurry up because I'm dying homeless. <laughs> Why do you think it's a stump? Go ahead, stand up and tell me. Because it's wood and it's round, go ahead. Yeah, well, get out of here, you're peeking up. <laughs> you're peeking, you're peeking, that's not fair. You cannot peek on this show today. <laughs> All right, she saw the goodies. I'm going to show you. I made this drum. I made it the old fashioned way to show all the Native Americans through the whole country that you have to go back to your tradition. And this is what the inside looks like oh. hand carved. I carved that, it took me over a year to make this, and you have to smoke it and make it, uh, you have to heat it. I had to heat it all morning uh, with the hair dryer, but in the old days, and the uh, last time when I first made this, I had to do it by fire, by seed of fire. Bless it. But what's the big deal about this? Well, I have a CD called Frank, and on it, I used this drum. And why I'm telling you that, I'm not here to sell my CD. But I am here to tell you something very scientific. As I said before, what I, how our weeks was made. Excuse me, I gotta find my drums. Well, you know, I had a good day today. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> so, beautiful echo in this thing. I sing in G. What that means is a very low tone. Oh, very mi fa so la ti do. Very loud mouth. I told you Indians are loud. But let's keep it down low. And we're going to sing a song with this drum. We're going to have my wife come back again, show you what the words are. We'll practice it first. We got five, what are we just for? Five, ten minutes. But the secret, and um, you can stand over there, please, with the song. And do you think that this actually sounds like a drum in an orchestration in, New in Boston, in New York, with these big orchestra drums? Do you think that would be true? They come in when I went to the studio and I brought this drum. What they told me at the studio that the lowest, lowest bass sound the drum can make is at 100 decimal. What that means is low, low G like me. Now I made the drum, but did I make it to match my voice? You ready to hear this drum? Yeah. You think it plays? Yeah. You think it sings? No. With a drum beat. Okay, I love it. <laughs> make you wait and wait. I do that to my family. All right, ready? Say one and a two and a three.
Oh, Gio, oh, Janae. Oh, Gio, oh, Janae.